hello everyone so in this particular video we are going to understand about the cache and persist these are important interview question also so you should know about the cache and persist so let us start so cache and persist these are the kpi provided by spark through which we can store our data in a memory or even if you want to store the data in a disk or memory and disk that is possibility with the help of the cache and persist let's take one example with that example let's try to understand suppose we have one of the large data set in this large data set on top of this i am performing a multiple transformations like df1 df2 df3 df4 uh, df5 like that the multiple transformation is happening so whenever i am calling the action what is happening in this case df2 is getting called multiple times so suppose i have, I have done one count suppose i am doing one count df5 dot count in this case what is happening the df5 is calling this df2 and the process is happening and finally we are getting the final result now suppose i am doing a df6 dot count in this case what happening again it is calling the df2 process is happening and finally i am getting the df6 count so what happening if the same operation we are doing a multiple time instead of doing that what actually we can do whatever the intermediate result will be available right for this df2 we can store in a memory or disk and from there actually we can uh, get the result faster as compared to calculating again and again so instead of calculating again and again what actually we can do we can store the result of intermediate result of this data frame to in a memory for the faster access so that is possible with the help of the cache and persist so if you'll see cache and persist are used to store the intermediate result of a data frame or rdd to improve the performance when reusing the same data multiple time suppose this df2 if i am using a multiple times again and again so instead of doing that what actually we can do we can store this result in a memory for the faster access there are some difference between the cache and persist so caching generally refer to storing the data in a memory for quick access in the case of caching what will happen we can store the whatever the intermediate result right in a memory only or memory and disk in the case of persisting we can store the data in a memory disk or memory and disk these are the functionality we get in the case of the caching we can store the data in a memory only or memory and disk only but in the case of the persisting we get a flexibility whatever the result we want to store right we can store in a memory even if you want to store in a disk or memory and disk this all the things actually we get a flexibility in the case of the persisting let's take one example with that example let's try to understand so before coming to the example in spark generally two types of operation happens one is the transformation one is the action so in the case of the transformation what happens until and unless you will not call any action this transformation will not get executed this already we know right once you will call the action then only this transformation will get executed suppose you have a hundred of the transformation so suppose you are not calling any action so in this case what will happen one dag will get created this dag is nothing but it's kind of the graph in the graph all the steps will be mentioned whatever the transformation you are doing now once you will call the action this all the process will start uh, and it will get executed so this is how actually it happens in the case of the spark now i have a same kind of the scenario in this scenario what actually i am doing the first is like i have one of the data frame i am performing one transformation so first i am using a select transformation so i am selecting only the few column from the particular data frame so this is one of the transformation so i am performing a transformation one in this case i haven't called any action as of now so what it will do it will create one graph after that i am performing one filter and i am filtering only the india data in this case also i haven't performed any action so what will happen this transformation it will get stored in the form of the graphical form this dag now after that again i am performing one uh, transformation here i am calculating the bonus by salary into 0.1 whatever the calculation i am doing and i am deriving this bonus column this is also a transformation it will also store in the form of the DAG similarly I am also deriving the experience and age these are also a transformation now after that what is happening once you will call the action so in this case what actually I am doing df3 dot counts when I am doing df3 dot counts so what will happen this df3 will call the df2 
df3 will call the df2 and what this df2 will do this df2 will call the df1 and after that the process will happen so when i am doing a df3 dot counts so what will happen first it will call the df2 and this df2 2 will call the df1 and from df1 the process will start it will call it will process the df1 it will process the df2 and finally we'll get the output for the df3 dot count that is clear right now in the case of the df4 dot count when i am saying df4 dot counts in the case of the df4 what will happening again it is calling the df2 so what will happen it will call to the df2 the process will start df2 will call the df1 the process will start and uh, df1 process will start df2 process will start and finally we'll get the output for the df4 dot count now if i am writing df5 dot count this is also action in the case of the df5 what is happening it is again calling the df2 and df2 is again calling the df1 so again the process will start for the df1 df2 and finally we'll get the output for the df5 so what is happening we are calling multiple time the same operation this df2 so what actually we can do we can store this result in the cache or persist format means we can store this intermediate result in a memory or memory or disk or whatever the form you want and from for the faster accessing if you will not use cache and persist multiple time you have to perform the same operation like um, uh, df3 will call the df2 df2 will call the df1 in the case of the df4 will call the df2 df2 will call the df1 so if you will not use a cache the multiple time you have to perform the same operation and that is a costly also and time consuming also so instead of doing that what actually we can do intermediate result we can store in the form of the cache or persist so that is the advantage we get so i hope you got the idea so whenever same operation you are doing a multiple time so to improve the performance what actually we can do with the help of the cache and persist we can improve the performance we can store the data in a memory or disk in whatever the intermediate result uh, for the faster accessing now when we have to use cache and when we have to use a persist so in the case of the cache the default storage level is memory and disk so in the case of the rdd default storage level is memory only means you can store your uh, result in the memory only but in the case of the data frame or the data set you by default storage level is a memory and disk means either you can store your data in a memory as well as the disk the first preference is like a memory if the memory is not available then it will store the data in a disk means spark will try to store the data in a memory only but if there is not enough memory it will split the data in a disk so in the case of the cache by default memory and disk will be available for the data frame and data set it will try to store your intermediate result whatever the data in the memory and it will uh, and if the memory is not available it will also store in the disk when we have to use a cache when you want to quickly cache the data frame or rdd with the default storage level when your requirement is like you want to have only this memory and disk when you want to go with that then you can use a cache but in the case of the persist we get a more flexibility like this persist allow you to specify the storage level explicitly here we get a multiple storage option suppose you want to store your data in a memory only then we have option you want to store your data in memory and disk that also we have option you want to store your data in a disk only that also option we have you want, uh, want to store your data in a memory only serialization that option also we have memory and disk so multiple storage option we get when you want more flexibility more control where and how we have to store the data then you can go for the persist now let's understand memory only in the case of the memory only it will store the data only in memory it is faster but it may evict the data if memory is not sufficient if you have a memory issue then it will create a problem when you will use a memory and this it will store the data in a memory and if the memory is not available then it will store the data in a disk this already we have seen in the case of the cache also we also have an option for the disk only in the case of the disk what will happen it will store the data only on disk it is slowest as compared to the memory we have option memory only serialization it is store the data in a memory as serialized object it reduce the memory usage and may increase the cpu overhead memory and disk serialization is store the data in a memory a serialized object and also split the data in disk so these are the different storage option we have that is possible in the case of the persist only but in the case of the cache 
we have only one option either you can store in a memory or memory and disk now uh, you can see if you are using a memory only then space is using high cpu time is low in memory is yes on disk is no memory only serialization case space use is low cpu time is high in memory is yes on disk is no memory and disk space use used is high cpu time is medium in memory is some on disk is some now the main thing is like when we have to use a cache and when we have to use a persis so when you don't need to customize the storage level like you want to go by default like memory and disk then you can directly choose the cache but suppose where your requirement is like you want to control like the storage level like you want more flexibility you want to store in a disk you want to store in a memory you want to store in a memory and disk then you can go for the persist that is the thing we have to remember and the syntax wise also it is a very simple in the case of the in the case of the cache we have to use df.cache in the case of the persist we have to use df.persist and the storage level we have to define yeah so yeah that's it in this video i hope you got the idea